Hi and welcome to another My Take On. This time it's Julia Florida. This is for one of my lovely patrons called Ray. And um, yeah, let's have a look at it. The thing about uh, Julia Florida and all of uh, Barrios's music, it was never published in his lifetime. So you'll find um, lots of editions of it around and some of them will be slightly different. So I'm working from the Richard Stover edition they're really great books actually because uh, you know each one's got 20 or 30 uh, Barrios pieces in it I think there's three volumes so I'll leave a link to those in the um, description somewhere around is his original handwritten versions and I believe he used to change you know from performance to performance sort of bark style he used to improvise a little bit so um, yeah there's not one definitive 
correct version and, and I've made a couple of changes to this as well which I'll tell you about as we go through it but um, it really is a fantastic uh, piece of work really well written as an arranger I can really appreciate how it sits so perfectly on the guitar there's uh, nothing above you know ninth tenth position um, it's all pretty easy to play really and uh, it just fits so well some of the voice the chord voicings so yeah coming back to it again I really sort of a lot of admiration for what uh, Barrios did um, the piece uh, was written for one of his students I think her name was Julia Martinez but they called her Julia Florida because it meant she was growing up uh, really blooming um, yeah so he, he wrote it for her one of his students and it's a barcarolle which is a sort of Venetian gondola gondolier music so it's got that slow 6-8 feel it's a song um, so you could you should always think of it as being sung anyway so let's have a look uh, I'm not going to go through all the fingerings but I'll go through a few that I've changed and a few of the more tricky ones so let's look at this um, introduction now there are rests uh, below that chord now you could cut them up off with um, you could cut them off with P and I like that but I do it kind of slowly I don't do it instantly I do it uh, that was slow motion and then the second one I cut the D and then I cut the A at the same time I play the B in the melody um, I just think the other way if you cut it at literally as written it just sounds a bit stark so um, yeah that, that's what I do with that introduction like that and I spread that chord as well now these slides they are very much of I think it was written 1938 they're very much of the time um, so I think I've taken a couple of them out and I'll tell you which ones I've taken out as we go through it I'm just going to tune so the first the first one I leave in but you do get a lot of string squeak if you're not careful they can sound a little bit um, cumbersome okay so the first thing to talk about is the balance in the melody you want the melody to really sing out over the accompaniment see that bit there they're really I'm just touching that accompanying accompaniment there and here vibrato to really make that sing out but listen how quiet those bass notes are so. and that uh, it's quite difficult to achieve but um, I think it's essential actually I don't think it's uh, it, it improves it so much so that's my first kind of uh, advice in the whole piece is the balance okay so going forward to bar 10 um, slide the third finger up here fourth on the F sharp one on the D and then I've got two on the E on the B string one four and then I move two across to the G and I slur that and then I play an artificial harmonic on the 12th and it works quite nicely because then you come back with the melody and it's a different tone quality to the, the A before it. So I'll just play that a little bit again. And notice the rowl at the end there. there is a bit of 
bit of a stretch if the thumb stays in the same place at the back. So you want to move the thumb up a little bit like that. I think you can just see what I'm doing there. Halfway through that phrase and that will help you to get this. Okay, so um, yeah, following on from that bit here. I'm putting the fourth down uh, on the fourth string on the 11th fret. Stretching back to one and two, and then that gliss there, that little grace note, not too fast because you'll lose it otherwise. It's uh, now here, slide the four down, I'm in second position, and then back up to seventh, and again. One of those, and you can spread this chord, and again the balance there. You want that melody to sing out, so the voicing underneath it quite quiet. Now here, I don't finger it as written. I go to the bar like that because that happens again at the end of the piece and you only have to learn that once. You don't have to learn it in two different fingerings. So, now I slide four here. Instead of jumping onto there, I cut the chord a little short, slide the fourth down and put the, the chord on there below. Now this bit here, fingered as, as uh, in the book here, but what I do is I slur. That inner voice, slur. And then these slurs that follow, Kind of go well with that those slurs so I think that's quite a nice nice thing to do there okay so bar 21 um, I think that the melody starts from the B so you've got this little figure here in the bass with the slur that we were just talking about and then and then so echo it like that so I, it's just my way of doing it I, I start that phrase from the B. If I go back a bar, and then nice rest stroke on that B, and really soft on the chord below it, because you get that lovely suspension, a little clash between the B and the C sharp. fingered this bit so I'll just go through the fingering with you. Open B, I've got four on the C sharp, one on the E, and then I do two open, two open, and then four and three, open, one, and then that's written like that. Uh, and the way I'm shaping that melody is tied over. Okay, so the whole of that phrase. Echo. Tied. And a little pause there, just to enjoy that chord. This bit here, I phrase it a slightly different way where, like the B that we just looked at, it's tied over. So it's... Like that. And if you put the chords underneath it and play them soft enough... It sounds really nice. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to refinger it again. So, one, slide 
side there. So you've got two on the F sharp, three on the uh, higher F sharp, and four on the B there. So that whole phrase. Now this bit here, I'm using artificial harmonics. Um, so that's still ringing on. And then I come and do these harmonics here at the 12th fret. And then I play open strings and a C sharp with the first. And all those harmonics hopefully are still ringing on. So. Okay. Again, that whole section, it sort of begins to make sense as you put it together. And then I four on the E, and I bring one across to the G. Open B, E, and then you're in position for fifth position chord here. Okay, so that's one of my favourite sections of the piece. Um, now if you can put a bit of vibrato on this G there, it really sounds lovely. So that's as written in the book, and then slide four. Now here, that's as written. But here, I want you to sustain this B. You've got that nice chord there. And again here, and that B is ringing on, and you get this sustained chord. that slowly you can hear all that all those harmonies going on but balance is really important because it's no good playing that and then playing the note above it loud you have to play the C sharp softly to match the volume so that's quite a tricky thing to do, but from here. Now I do a little slur on that one to one look. I'm just slurring it. And then you're back to where you started. I'll play it again. second time you come round it's slightly different fingering so bring across four onto the um, F sharp here one three leaving two free for the bass note and then a bar a one-third bar Second, second fret, and then you've got two and four down like that, and that leaves one and th one and three. I can't talk. One and three free to do all this. Then you're up into ninth position after that. So. Um, See how important the balance is there. You really want
down to here. This is all as written. Now here, slide four. these fingers free for that chord there otherwise if you were to use three you'd have to jump three and it'd, it'd feel awkward so another refingering there so the next bit after that four three on the E sharp two on the C sharp, one on the A, and then bring across two on the low F sharp and three on the high F sharp. So that, um, yeah, that sounds like this. difficult. Now notice the two here on the E sharp. It's a clever fingering and it's in the in the Richard Stover book but you've got the bar ready see to go back to there. And you slide two up. bar there now slide the two up there and four a little bit of vibrato vibrato and slide back down now there's uh, a place where I I really don't like that um, maybe when they had gut strings it wouldn't have sounded quite so cumbersome but um, so I just leave it out basically there's one on the F there three fantastic bit of writing there, so that chord. Now this little slow you might find tricky, but you, you can practice it like this. It's, it's difficult because the other fingers are all down and you, 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 can't, you can't help with the weight of them but um, yeah just keep practicing that and now this is fantastic as well so I've repositioned the camera so you can see a little bit more of what's going on I've hinge bar that there and I'll bring the hinge over to get the G natural in the bass harmonic artificial fourth string 19th fret so that's a lovely sonority there so what I'm trying to do here is have all the notes ring on or at least give the illusion that they're all ringing on and then slide everything down apart from the fourth and it's all ringing on again 
this time it's not easy to get the harmonic there so I'm going to bring the fourth finger here on the A there so that looks like this and then no barre here it's just a second a first finger on the second fret of the sixth string second finger on the fourth fret of the fifth string so it's open G onto fourth uh, fret and then take everything off and slide like that and then the last harmonic there with the fourth finger for that whole passage and the thing is about that you have to try and get that harmonic ringing on for as long as possible it won't always you won't always be able to can there and there then you have to lose it there but you can there and then slide so it's all about those A's I'll just play it once more To the beginning again so I'm going to look now at the very last uh, at bar 59 um, there we've got that chord that we practiced before remember I didn't refinger it I, I, I had it the same so it's but this has got four notes in it this chord not three like before you're playing the, a, the E on the B string as well the chord and put the two down there open fourth open a you have to lose that melody open D first on the ninth of the fifth string harmonics and you're going to put these two down for artificial and then you've got two seventh fret harmonics and a fourth fret harmonic and then two twelfth fret ones as I say some additions are different and your some will be sort of um, kind of thing you'll, you'll hear some people do that but yeah I'm sticking quite closely to the uh, Richard Stover edition so try and keep that those two ringing on try not to block off that when you put the, the first finger down get that nice resonance there uh, So these harmonics here if you can't find them <laughs> get a little bit of find out where they are like this uh, put the note down might help and you can mark them with a little tiny bit of Indian ink if that helps don't get any on your guitar though but I, I can do it without really I just guess the, where they're going to be but all ringing on and then so that's it it's, it's not a full lesson it's just a few hints but um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, thanks for Ray to, for the suggestion you better get practicing now Ray um, so yes I'll be back again with another one so any suggestions you've got let me know thanks very much